Hey folks, it's Tom, your frugal prepper. Um, I'm going to do a video here on getting some of these Nikad batteries back to life. Um, I just I lost some footage, so I'm going to kind of put some parts and pieces in there. Um, I had one of the four batteries I just couldn't get back, bad cell. I just went ahead and tossed it. Um, but, you know, if you go searching in certain places where people may throw batteries in a bin to recycle them um, you may come across some for your particular drill now let me tell you this procedure is only going to work on NICAD batteries um, and some NICADs may have some special microprocessor controlled stuff in them or whatever these Ryobi ones do not um, so do this at your own risk it's dangerous um, but usually it will fix them so most people think that they get a memory effect on their NICAD batteries and that that's not what happens um, NICAD batteries are actually amazingly um, they have amazing longevity like they never really go bad that chemical reaction never uh, goes away um, there's NICAD batteries that have been running on satellites in space for 40 50 years and they're still perfectly good batteries um, so what the memory effect is, is a phenomenon that we discovered in the early days of putting satellites in space with NICAP batteries. And that is on a NICAP battery, if you charge it uh, exactly the same amount and, it, and discharge it exactly the same amount continuously in a repeated cycle, that eventually it will memorize those levels and it won't discharge past that amount and it won't charge more than that amount. Um, that's the memory effect, and we discovered that on satellites where they're circling the Earth, and there's no tilt of the axis to take into effect up there. It's in an orbit, and it has the exact amount of solar power to charge every day and the exact amount of discharge. So they had to start making it so these batteries would just run five minutes longer before they charged every once in a while. They, they have to just switch it up a little, and then they won't get that memory effect. Um, that's not what happens to you on your drill battery. What you usually first start noticing is I take this thing off the charger and it just doesn't hold a charge very long and then you say oh you know what if I just leave it sitting here for a few days it's dead when I come back it doesn't hold the charge and then before long you drop it in your charger and your charger starts giving you the flashy red light or whatever says it's a bad battery. So uh, on your battery you have an anode and a cathode and the electrons flow between those and, and, and when you charge them up it puts the electrons back on one side and then it flows to the other side right and when you use your tool and then it takes the electrons off of that side and puts them back on the other side when you charge and you know there are two plates nickel and cadmium separated by a small insulator wrapped around in a big circle inside that battery that makes nickel cadmium cells and so um, what happens is you get little whiskers that grow around the edges of those plates, right? And this little tiny filament's almost microscopic. And a few of them don't hurt. You get a few more, a few more, and then pretty soon it's starting to create a short circuit within the cell. Not a big one. It's still pretty high resistance. That's when you notice your battery doesn't last this long. It gets a little worse, and you notice your battery goes dead on its own after it sits for a while. And when it gets really bad, your charger says there is a short in this battery. This battery is requiring too many amps to charge. I'm shutting down. <clears throat> so what we can do is give those batteries a huge surge of current. Boop, all at once. And those little whisker filaments right there will just go boop, and they'll, they'll just explode and go away they'll melt down essentially and then your anode and your cathode is separated again your battery's like new all over again and it was important you know cadmium is highly toxic to human life so uh, when they have to dispose of these things it's just a mess um, so if you can make your batteries last as long as possible that's great save some from the landfill even better um, but I'll show you this, um, and uh, the I don't know how much footage I got. The one battery that I was going to, I put it in the charger to show you, it doesn't charge. Then I went to go ahead and, and do the process, and that was the bad one that wouldn't the process wouldn't work on. 
the other three it all worked on. Unfortunately, I did two before the video, and then when I grabbed the fourth one, I didn't show you first that it didn't charge on video. But you're just going to have to trust me. No, None of these four are charged. They've been sitting in my shed since last year. They wouldn't charge for how who knows how long before that. And so, you know, I just had them there. I was meaning to do this procedure for a while. And so, you know, now I've got myself a couple working lithium batteries. I have a video on that one lithium battery that I just put up. And um, three working good NICAD batteries. So, you know, these all work fine. Take that lithium off of there. These have been sitting for a few hours now. They also have a good full charge. And these were batteries that people were going to throw away. So, um, this helps save you some money because these battery packs aren't cheap. And um, NICADs will outlive a lithium. And if, except for that whisker problem. Now, the way you avoid that from happening is never store your batteries topped off. Never keep them on the charger. When that charges at its maximum is when the whiskers really start to try to grow because they're trying to take more current and they can't. And so there's little whisker filaments grow in there to, to bridge that gap. So when I take these off the charger, I run them a little while. Don't let them run down a little bit. <laughs> you know, uh, take, take a few percentage off of them and then let them sit. And you'll be a whole lot better off and your batteries will last a whole lot longer. And in fact... A lot of people start having batteries that don't hold a charge, so then they just leave them on the charger. That actually makes the problem get a whole lot worse a whole lot faster. So enjoy the video. I've gone on for six minutes here for an intro, but I wanted to do this because there's a couple spots where I thought I was recording and wasn't, and it just turned into a nightmare. But I'm going to show you at least the process that I did, and uh, you take it from there. It's risky. It's not exactly um, what I consider safe. Uh, wear safety equipment. Do this at your own peril. Do this at your own risk. Make your own decision. You may say, hey, you know, I'd rather just buy a new battery and I'll send that old one to Frugal Prepper and he can use it. That's fine with me. Um, I will see you all later. Enjoy the video. What most people do is they leave their batteries on their charger and they grow whiskers. So I've gotten two of these uh, batteries charging over here now um, and working. So I'm just going to show you what I do. This is dangerous. I don't recommend that you do it yourself. But it will blow those whiskers out in between the anode of the cathode or it will blow up in your face. Hasn't happened to me yet. So I got this battery. I'll show you here. Here's the charger. Make sure you can see this. Okay. So I'm going to put this battery. I think this is the one that wasn't charging. Yeah, you see it's just blinking red. It won't take a charge. Um, I think this is the one, yeah, that I already had charging. So, <laughs> gonna be crazy. We're going to take and kick our welder on low. It's a little 110 volt welder. We're going to tap this side with the negative cable here. And then we're just going to come in here. And just like that. Turn the welder off. And we'll clean off those little burn marks. Drop it in here. Gonna make a wire out of it. We'll go ahead and tap her one more time. A couple more times. Like so, turn the welder off. Clean that off. Make sure these are good and clean. And what I may have to do is put a little voltage in this battery to see if it's got anything in it. Now. Not much. 
Sometimes you gotta get them up to 20 volt, 20, 12 volts before they'll charge. So I'll go ahead and take my wire here. This is an AC adapter, it puts out about 30 volts. Put that, I got the knot tied on the positive side. We'll go ahead and just put a little charge in. Got any voltage? No, I think my meter is dying. That's okay. She's at 19.5 here. That one might not be savable. So let's try this one. I'll keep my welder on low. Take my ground clamp from my welder. To the negative side of this guy, like so. There we go. Give her a nice big surge. Take her off. We're going to clean off the terminal here with the wire brush. There she goes, she's charging. You can see that there. She's blinking green. So, that one's going to be good. So, this one I can't get to take a charge. I got three of them working. So, what I'm going to do is hit that one more time. We'll give her a shot. this out the negative over here my welder on the wall clean off the terminal So that one just don't have, that one's, I'm just not going to get back. But out of three bad batteries, they, I was able to get three of them to come back. So I might hit this one a couple more times, put it through some some manual charge charging with this guy, see if I can't get it to come back. But that will kind of show you like uh, a little trick sometimes to get a little life out of your, extra life out of your batteries. That high surge of current coming through from the welder will blow those whiskers off. Now sometimes the anodes and the cathodes are just too bad. Or more than likely what happened on this one is the cell has gone into cell reversal from being com run completely, completely flat. And uh, you could take this apart and replace the cell. I don't know if I'll worry about that. I'll go get some more out of the trash can or the battery recycling bin and uh, fix them up and have have some more but right now I got my lithium battery fixed it's taking a full charge got another lithium here it's taking a full charge and three NICADs that are charging so I'm a happy guy but maybe that trick will help y'all uh, just be careful probably should wear some safety glasses and stuff when you do this uh, I'm not recommending that you do this but if you if you did do it at your own risk